Uh, today we want to do some Q&A and uh, then I've got some thoughts about things that I've been sort of playing with. Uh, so let's do the Q&A stuff. Uh, uh, announcements uh, I'll fill in later on. And by the way, all these, uh, all these things will be filled in when the video is, uh, is published. Uh, and I'll list all these and you can go to our discussion group or on the website and see the, the notes so you don't have to be frantically taking notes, try to absorb absorb what we're talking about here. Um, uh, so let's start with Q&A. Who has some questions? I think, uh, John, you had one about how to tag, right? How to tag. Yep. Other questions? Oh, come on, there must be things. So you forgot it? I can't imagine. I know it's Jim. I never up updated my laptop to the current operating system. Okay. What is this? Gives me an M. The Mojave. Mojave. I never did that because I read too many scary stories on the, on, on the uh, email. So when the new one comes up in the fall, what's it called? Catalina. Catalina. Can I go from I Sierra to Catalina? Um. Generally, the answer is yes, but since we haven't seen Catalina yet, uh, I'm not even beta. I'm, personally, I'm not beta testing Catalina yet, so I can't answer that question. But but generally, gen yeah, I've been a beta tester for. Uh, I beta tested Mojave, and I think that's not spelled right. Right, Mojave is with a J, and it. Uh, generally, yes, but we we have to wait and sort of see. Okay. You know. So that's when we get a question and an answer right away. Uh, well, Other so questions? Far, Go ahead. So Go ahead. Is it safe to, I mean, are there still horror stories about Mojave coming down the pipe, or is it safe to upgrade? No, I've had no trouble with Mojave at all. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I think Mojave is about the best in the installations uh, yet. We really have a good trouble. Okay. Thank you. How good does your computer have to be to do it? Uh, they will. They will tell you that if if it's not new enough, uh, it won't let you do it. So gener generally speaking, it it will run a little diagnostic, and uh, and it will it will tell you that it's too old or whatever. Uh, mine was a 2011 vintage. Um, in, uh, sorry, a mid 2012 vintage, and uh, I upgraded all the way through to Mojave with no trouble. Oh, actually, uh, 2011. I did on those two. Yeah. I always annoyed with my It just saves remembering what the answers were. Uh, yes, sir, in the back. Oh, Don. The keyboard on the, like on the mail, because it's got letters and then it's got numbers and characters and whatnot. How do you switch from one to the next? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand the question. Say it again. How do you switch from letters to characters on if you're typing a message in mail? In mail, how do you numbers switch? Numbers above the letters, numbers and characters. How, how do you switch to the numbers above the line? Okay. Thank you. Other questions? On uh, my new MacBook Pro, anytime I open something, it never opens full screen. Um, I do that, no matter what I open. Mm. I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Uh, I was wondering if, if anyone is having a problem with, um, uh, I was wondering if there, anyone else was having a problem with like downloading uh, when I turn my computer on, or click on getting photographs and stuff like that, and it's taking a, a lot longer, and it's just been maybe the last four or five days. And I wondered if they were possibly cutting back on the signal. Who's your carrier? Who's your internet? Uh, Hotwire. Uh, boy, you know, they're so fast. Yeah, um, not ever had a problem, but I know that I was getting, I've been sending out a lot and getting managed, so I, Switched over to a lower screen photograph because I was using the phone. I, I my recommendation would be to call Hotwire. Oh, okay. 
because it, it's not a it's not a system problem. Okay. Uh, to my I mean to my knowledge, we've been downloading all sorts of stuff, and we don't have Hotwire. We have CenturyLink, and it's oh. still super fast. And yeah, you know, very fast. I'd call. But I'd call. It sounds like it's an ISP issue, or or maybe you have to clear your buffers or something. But they'll they'll help you with that. Yeah. You see these little white things, this little gray thing, this little guy, those are all adapters to get from USB to USB-C or USB-3. That's what these things are, right? They're just, um, you know, they're making money. They're just, uh, buy them from Amazon, but buy you gotta buy the Apple ones from Amazon. You know? But there are all sorts of adapters that are out. Uh, these little white guys, uh, sorry, the screen can't see them, uh, the little white guys are like 30 bucks, you know, these things. They're 30 bucks each, you know. Same same issue we had when we went from the the 20 pin connectors to the little lightnings. Now we're going to USB-Cs. So you got to buy adapters for whatever you want to plug in. Several adapters. Several adapters. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a bad one. Adapters, buy a buy adapters. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Marty Malik, Marty, I sent you a question last night, so I don't know if you got it, and if you want to cover this, or you want me to ask it now. Uh, please ask it because I I haven't been paying attention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My, I mean, uh, never mind. One problem. <laughs> I have a video on a flash drive. Okay. And I'm trying to send it out to. Uh, are you asking me a transmission question or a PC question? Transmission from my Mac. From your Mac, it's on a flash drive. Yes. And you want to send it to them. What kind of a video is it? How long is it? Uh, about an hour. But an hour long. No, no, wait. I have it in three sections. Well, so it's um, 20 minutes. One, say, one gigabyte, the other one, three gigabytes, and one goes to 713, and these are um, it, it's really hard to do that. Uh, the, the best solution I can offer is, is YouTube. That's what we do with our video. Like when this gets recorded and published, George publishes on YouTube. Um, usually they have a 15 minute limit. So you might have to break it into 15 minute chunks and then just use your Gmail account and publish it to YouTube. And then you can, you do the same thing that you like we do on, uh, on our uh, uh, website. You just have, you just send people an email that says, yep, I mean, it's part of the system. Uh, you send them the link and you say, here's my video, you go to watch it. Thank you. And if you, if you need help doing that, ask me offline or, or talk to George. I mean, many of us do. Many of us do that. We transfer also the device send up to two gigabytes for free. Hey, you send larger box. You just want to send it to them. <laughs> Speak up just a little bit, please. Sorry. You mean it, it literally blew up or? Well, no, it expanded. So it, it sort of goozed out? Yeah. Uh, I would say, I would suggest two things. I would suggest that you don't touch it because it's acid, right? You know, like just very carefully put it into something and wrap it in a bag and wrap it in another bag. And then you have to dispose of that carefully. You can't throw it in the garbage. 
It has to be taken down. It has to be taken down to Collier Recycle or to the, well, there's several of them. The one down on Horseshoe is one, or the one up on Goodlit, uh, just south of Immokalee is one. Uh, explain what it is, but they'll, they'll dispose of it for you. Uh, what makes it happen is as they get old, they generate gas. And sometimes the gas doesn't escape from the little weep holes that are in it. And it causes the plastic to, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, I mean, sometimes the gas, you know, the gas does it, or sometimes they just get old and the, you know, it expands or the plastic breaks or whatever. Um, you know, just be, just be careful with it because it is acid. You got to be careful. I don't really understand the question battery yeah but even if it, even if it's even if it's uh, i mean i don't i don't think there are any batteries that are self contained uh you just open the bottom and even on this new one there's a battery inside no was it an apple brand battery no 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 as they get old. Okay, other questions? Anything else? All right, easy group today. So we got most of them done. Let's just go back and, and reiterate a little bit here. Um, how to tag, I'll come back to that. Uh, what happens when Catalina comes out? I'm not sure yet. We'll find out with beta testing. I think I covered that, uh, which will be now. Um, is it safe to upgrade? Yes, um, I think we covered that. Keyboard and mail, I'll come back to that. New MacBook Pro, how to open full screen. I don't know the answer to that. All right, let's do tag. Tagging is uh, what we do with a file um, uh, that um, we, want to, we want to then be able to sort somehow, right? We want to be able to go in and find it. Um, uh, that uh, we want to find later. So the way you do that is on, I'll just show you here, but it's the same principle on a Mac. Um, let's say I wanted to tag these notes, right? Uh, I just held my finger on the, on the, uh, the file there slowly, slowly, and you see I get, these, I get these choices up above, right? This is sort of like right-clicking on a, on a Mac, and tags are one of the choices. So I touch tags, and if I have created tags, there will be a list. What it shows you now is it says add a new tag. So let's say, for example, I wanted to call this my NMUG tags, and I want all my NMUG tags to be green because um, that's our website. Our website's green and black, right? So I now have created a tag called NMUG, and it's green. So now I'm going to click done. I have to do it on the right device. And that divide, that a file is now called tag, is now tagged with NMUG. And let's just do another one just for, just for comparison. I'm going to label this. I'm going to tag it. And I'm going to make a new tag for this guy. And I'm going to call it um, downloads, just to be very creative since the file is called downloads anyway. And I want my downloads to be purple, right? So I touch done again. And I now have two tags created. Everybody can see it on the screen, right? And I have two tags created, one's downloads and one's NMUG. And um, uh, let's say I go uh, out of this and I go into my files and I say, okay, let's go find, you see here on the side, you're familiar with this, right? Locations, this is my, my files. I can browse or I can have recents, right? 
and down here are my two tags. So now if I wanted to find something on my iPad, I could just click iPad. If I wanted to find something on my iCloud Drive, I would just touch iCloud Drive, and that's what I get here, right? If I go to my Google Drive, I have these things in my Google Drive, but your question, how do I find my NMUG documents? I just touch the little green guy down here, and here's the document I just tagged with NMUG. So it's a very easy way to find things that are in different places. My numbers files would be in numbers. My pa pages would be in pages. My other stuff might be in movies or whatever. And I could have them all tagged and boom, they're there. How do you so get the locations? How do I get the locations? Well, I mean, you're familiar with my files, right? That little yes. file folder. So when I touch my files, it gives me all my locations, right? And this is every place where I can store things. In my case, because I have uh, Google Drive, Amazon Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, that's the Microsoft thing. iCloud is, is ours, uh, Apple's. On my iPad is not anywhere in the cloud, it's only on my device, right? So on my iPad are these folders that I have things in. And the NMUG, label the tag is that and you can have as many tags as you want you can use as many colors as you want and if you don't want to label them you can just color them okay okay all those drives uh when you have when you have the various um when you have the various uh, what do you call them um clouds Right here are my clouds. I keep my clouds all together. Right, so here are my clouds. And when you download the app, here's Google Drive. Right, when I downloaded the app Google Drive, it got added to that list. There's a little green switch that you throw. Do you pay for the Microsoft one or is it free? Uh, my Microsoft is part of Office 365, so it's free. But if you don't have Office 365, you can get OneDrive for free, and you get five gigabytes for free or something like that. Uh, if you have Office 365, you get a terabyte. So they give you they give it to you for free. I mean, it's in the $99 or whatever you pay. Okay. Questions about tagging? You're all you're all got that. Pretty easy, right? We had this, we had a guy talk to us about that a while ago, but um, it's um, it's um, I think he got into the weeds, and I, I'm sort of more a five thousand foot guy, you know. Different colors, labels, search, boom, works. And on a Mac, it's the same it's the same process. Uh, let me see if I can get a get a uh, file. It's not letting me do a file. Right, anyway, on the Mac, it's the same thing. You just find the, find the file, right-click it, and you'll have a tag, and you label the tag. Um, Catalina, uh, keyboard in mail, how to switch to numbers. Um, that's a, that's a uh, what do you call it, question, right? So let's get out of here. Stop mirroring. Oh, here's a file. Here's a good example. Oh, on the iPad. Yeah. Well, okay. Since I'm here, uh, here's, um, so I'm going to do control. And down here it says tags, right? So I just, I want to tag this file. So I control click it. I go down to tag. I say, yep, I want to tag that. And this is a tag for purple. Uh, sorry, I don't want to use purple because I use purple over here. So I'm going to delete this color. Now this is tag purple. You see it's purple or orange rather. So then if I searched, I could search for my orange tags and whoop, they would appear. Okay. Um, all right. So you want to know about this guy. And you said in mail. So Somewhere I have mail here. <clears throat> uh, 
And what's your question? Your question is, how do I get, how do I use these upper cases? Um, on the characters? Pad, each letter has a, a number associated. What's different from yours? I didn't change anything. I had the default, whatever your name is. So well, the way I would get from, the, the way I would get from the four, which I, if I type it, I get a four, to the dollar sign is I hold the shift key down and I get dollar signs. And the new, the new guys let you swipe down. And if you swipe down, what I'm doing with my finger on the, ca on the key is swiping. What I'm doing with my finger on the key is swiping down so that I can get the star or the thing without holding the shift key down. So that's for those of us who are, you know, not able to hold the shift key down and do that. You can just swipe down on the key. And the same thing with your cat with your caps. If you cap lock, you do that, uh, or I think it works. No, I guess it doesn't. Anyway, the double character guys, you just swipe down and do it. So I don't know if that answered that question or not. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. You mean yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Uh, new MacBook Pro, how to open full screen. Um, anybody else having downloads? USB, we talked about video on a flash drive, YouTube. I, I'll show you a YouTube uh, thing in a minute. Um, so um, who knows the answer to this question? New MacBook Pro, how to open full screen. Anybody know the answer to that? So here's MacBook Pro, right? That's what we're looking at. And you want to open something like this full screen. And you're saying this isn't adequate for you. You want to, you want it always to open full screen. It's not even that big. It's about three quarters of that actually. Yeah, well, that's just a right, that's a function of that, right? And normally when you when you click the little green guy, it makes it full screen, right? So we know how to make it full screen when we want it to. Now the question. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a view options. Let me see if we can, if I can get the heck out of this guy. Now, in Finder, view options is here. Show view options. And um, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Is it in preferences? Does anybody know the answer? How about under window? Yeah, window, that's a good idea. Cycle through windows, bring all to front, find their preferences. Find their preferences, let's see. Show these items, new finder. Yeah, that could be. Move on, show all finder. All right, when all else fails, so this is part of our uh, training uh, thingy here. Say it again. Command control S. For me, it doesn't do anything. Oh, F, full. Maybe I have the, well, hold on. Oh. So view, view stack sort by custom show view options. And we did preferences already, right? So Jerry's suggestion was system preferences, general, appearance, except show scroll bar, Command control F works. Command control F. I must have something turned off because it's not working for me. All right, how about desktop? Nope. I'm going to have to uh, look that up. 
about we look it up right now. We're gonna Safari. We're gonna say how to um, lock full screen on the MacBook Pro. To lock your Mac screen simultaneously, press Command Shift Eject. If you have a newer Mac that doesn't have an optical drive, up to the lock is, that's not what we want, right? The fastest way to lock your screen. How do I lock my screen? In full screen right there. Go to the Apple menu, System Preferences General. Uncheck the box that says Close Windows when committing, quitting an app. That doesn't sound like what we want either, does it? System Preferences General. System preferences general, uncheck the box, close. Close windows when credit when selected and open documents will not be restored when you reopen an app. So that's not what we're looking for. Usually when you Google it, you get the right answer. <clears throat> How do you do full screen on a Mac? Try that. Left corner of the app window, click the full screen button. Alternatively, use Control Command F. Well, it says Control Command F. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'm sorry. That's unsatisfactory. But if I find the answer, I'll post it. Call Apple here. <laughs> or call Apple here. You know, but that's a silly thing. We should be able to figure that out with 500 members. How to make a window full screen on a Mac? <clears throat> well, there's got to be a way, right? This is fairly common, particularly if there is a connection. Two methods. One approach is to take the full screen with all items, full screen mode, turns an application to loose the menu bar. Literally making a window take up the full screen, but still not change it. Nope, sorry. I know that's unsatisfactory. I, I will try to get a, an answer if I uh, can find it. Um, all right, so what else was there unanswered? Did we answer everybody's questions? Oh, I wanted to show you YouTube. Um, when you when you um, when you want to post something to YouTube, you just go to YouTube.com. Do you have a Gmail account? Yes. Okay. Not, so you, not YouTube, but there's the one for that. No, no, it's the same. That's what my my point was. It's the same sign in for YouTube as it is for Gmail, as it is for your other Google things, Google Drive and Google Photos, all those use the same sign in. So you would go to youtube.com, over here it says sign in, right? And you would simply sign in. I'm gonna sign in with my email address and, um, and now I have to remember the password. Hmm. Uh, you know, the downside of using the downside of using no, I'm see, I'm using one password, but the downside of not using one password on the machine that you're working from <laughs> is um, is that you have to go look it up because I don't on my machines at home. Oh, it's ah, I was close. I was close. One little password hint is uh, a lot of us think about complicated passwords and then when they say you have to change your password, then we think of a new complicated password. Well, it's easier just to add a character at the end. And it's very hard for the computers to figure it out. But, but as an example, let's say I use the password dog. It's too short, but let's say I had a dog, right? That's long enough. So I would make 
I capitalized and decapitalized, and that would get the pluses and minuses that you need, high, you know, a cap and a lowercase. And then the next six months later, they say you have to change your password, right? So now say I have a dog, dollar sign, or dollar sign, I have a dog. Then the next time you want to change it, you say, I have a dog, dollar sign, at sign. You know, and you just sort of use the characters that are in front of you without having to think of a new password. You can just add characters. And the characters are usually easy to remember, right? So anyway, so that's what I just did. I do not want to say the password because this is not my machine. I just want to show you how to do the YouTube. On YouTube, uh, like other Mac, Mac agents to use this, not now. So here's my uh, little face in the upper right. That will show you that it's your account, right? This says uh, plus with a camera, right? And these are your little Google apps that you can add. And over here are home trending subscriptions and library, right? But I want to add a uh, movie, so I'm going to do that. And it says, I just touched the little movie. It says upload a video. So if I had a video on this machine that I wanted to upload, I would simply say, upload the video. And now it's going to ask me, where is the video? Right? And then you just upload it. And here I can say, import from your Google Photos. So if I had my photos and my video in my Google Photos, I could simply touch that, go find it, and boom. Or here it says, drag them and, video and upload them. It's very easy. You just would find it on your computer, you drag it and you'd say, drag it up here. And now this choice is what kinds of, what kind of uh, privacy do I want? So for example, a family video, I would not want out for the entire world to see the family video. Um, so I would make it unlisted or private, right? Unlisted means it's in the system and if the Google finds it, then they'll post it. But if you say private, it's only yours and only the people that you have given the link to can get it. So you can do, if you do 15 minute chunks, you might get away with 20, it depends. Uh, one caveat, they do not let you publish uh, commercial music unless you've paid for it or you can prove that you own it. So if you have commercial music in the video, you might have to take it out, but try it and see. Generally, they don't let me, they don't let me publish. Uh, the music that I use because it's all commercial. Even in private? No, in private, you're okay. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, yeah, because it's for your own use. Yeah. And then once you're done, uh, it will appear over here where it says my channel. So your channel will list your movies. Now we're in my account. So presumably when this blue bar finishes, my movies will be listed here. They they can go here and see it without doing anything, just like you can see any video. No, they don't have to do anything. No. So I mean, you can go to mine. My account is Marty Dorio. So you go to youtubecom slash Dorio and here are my videos. You know, things that we've published that I, I've published are here, and then they just get listed across the top. And you can see I've had very good traffic. I, this unit had 10 views. This unit had 81 views, 19 views. You know, it depends. So it goes family things. So, you know, although the Canon ones were to, sent to Canon. So that's how you post to YouTube. It's very easy. Okay. Deborah? Marty, did you say that some of the videos um, going on an iMovie? And it has music attached to it that was long as your Private. Setting, private, private setting. Mm -hmm. It will publish with the music Yes. My, I mean, unless they've changed. My, mine let all my, my, uh, I, I'm mumbling here. <laughs> uh, for the, for the videos that we've published that had commercial music, as long as they were private, we had no issues. You just posted. Just posted their names on your account. Then. No, let's say I wanted to share this. Uh, I wanted to share this video with you, right? Now they could. I can send them a link by clicking share. 
stop, stop, stop. I can send them a link by clicking share. And it's simply a matter of putting the name of the people in here. These are people I've shared with before. So for example, I could share this with my son simply by clicking him, he would go in the two box and then I would sh share it with him, you can see it. I can share a link on Facebook or Twitter, or bl Blogger, Tumblr, you know, all these other guys, as long as I have an account, I can share those. It's a very easy way to share videos. I'm surprised my, the other ones aren't on here because we, we do birthday parties for friends. You know, when we get invited to a birthday party, I'll take a bunch of pictures, make a movie and then put it on YouTube. Let me see. Uh, no, that's two minutes and 58 seconds. <clears throat> it's just a highlight video of the property I was selling. Uh, who else had it? I saw a hand somewhere. Jim, did you, were you going to say something? Did I see a hand? I have a question. Sure. Did you hear at the new developers conference that they're getting rid of iTunes? Thank God. <laughs> it's not really. No, no, no. They're not really getting rid of iTunes. This is. This is iTunes, right? But it's music, right? Everybody sees that, right? The little music thing. Um, what's that called? The treble clef or something? Whatever. Um, I know somebody here must know what that is. Uh, all they're doing now is separating the podcasts off to a separate app. Because right now, when I go to my when I go to um, iTunes, I get music. I get movies, I get TV shows, I get podcasts, I get audiobooks. They've separated audiobooks already. Those go to audio to books, right? And now they're going to separate podcasts. And then these things are going to go to TV. And I think they'll probably rename it because it shouldn't just be TV. It should be video or you know, some other descriptor. And then you'll be left with music. Yeah, they're not no. no. We have too many people tied up in, I mean, I have all my music is in the cloud. It's up there. Jim. Um, last spring, I, I, uh, had, I taught the class on entertainment, quote unquote. Yes. Part, part of which was iTunes. Yeah. I'm going to suggest to Marilyn that if she wants to have that class again, that it be the new split out apps yeah. that iTunes generates. Sure. Yeah, and it'll come out in the fall, so by next season, yeah, no, be fine. but all they're doing is splitting it. I mean, they've done it with books. You know, we now have the book app separate from, from this guy <clears throat> and they've taken audio books out and moved them already. So that's done. And now they're just going to take the videos out. They're, they're sort of there already because the TV app on our iPads, the TV app is already an app. <clears throat> so I think it'll be pretty seamless and, and they're not going to, you know, they know how much money they make on iTunes. They're not going to cancel iTunes. That's not going to happen. I think you had a comment. Well, I, I was confusing it with Apple TV because it seemed like they were calling it Apple TV. It was going to be available to everyone. But if you have Apple TV, that's a separate. Right. But Apple TV is a separate. Um, Which I have. Right. And I think, oh no, they're not getting rid of that now. No, 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 no. Because what, they're, what, what has happened with Apple TV, <clears throat> we have two apps on, on our iPads now, right? We have, um, we have this guy, which is called uh, Apple TV, yeah. right? That's Apple TV. And then we have, uh, I don't remember if I put it there, or if I put it over here. Somewhere I have a TV app. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. All right, so who knows how to find something when you're looking for it? You put your finger, you put your finger in there, right? And you type up here TV and it gives you a TV and that looks like the Apple TV app, but it's really the TV app. It should be the other app, right? Uh, see, this is the TV app. 
And the TV app now has TV shows, movies, you know, and then it's broken out by, by category over here. And you still can right. get those up on your Apple TV. Right. And then that's an app on your Apple TV. When you open Apple TV, that app comes up. Yeah. So they're, I mean, they're just, you know, they're, they're building their portfolio. Now they're going to have streaming service, right? They're going to stream and they have their own credit card. And pretty soon somebody's going to say, you know, Apple is a bank. So we should regulate Apple because they're doing such a great, I mean, Apple pay and all that. Going. Yes, sir. I, tell me your name. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm Jim. Jim. Go ahead. Of the new app that's on like my new Samsung TV that says Apple TV. I did not see the option to stream the WWC like you get on the on the true Apple TV hockey puck. And I didn't know if that was there and I just couldn't find it or not. Um it's not there. It's not there. Okay. It's not there because it's a separate app. It's a separate app in the uh when you go to your Apple TV, it's listed separately. See, um, I have a I have a separate app on my on my little guy here. I have WDC somewhere, um, which is the developers conference. I don't remember. Um, anyway, so apparently it's not there. Okay. We can run any courses on uh, one pass or something like that next year. Uh, you know, we ran uh, the last class this year was uh, was um, protection, and and Jeff covered the security things, one pass and all that. So yeah. I would guess we do it again. You know, about this one particular app, because yeah. I, well, I don't have one. I had one or two years ago, just traveling around. Yeah, the, the app or whatever. I don't know. Well, one pass. I mean, I have one pass here. Right. Um, I use one pass for everything. Um, try again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have 800 uh, entries you can see here, you know, and I use it for all these different things, software licenses, but I bought the pro version. So I get the one with software licenses and servers. Oh, so you're not you know, I use it. No, this is still uh, one past six. Seven's out. I didn't upgrade because they want me to do it monthly and I'm really happy with this one. So until they tell me why I should spend more money. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. How are we doing on time? 12, 18. Um, let's cover some of the things that I was going to cover, which I haven't started talking about yet. Um, I made up, I made up a list and I called this list things I should know in case I need them. Um, some of this is personal experience because I just went, if you, those of you who were at the meeting last month, when I asked my questions, <clears throat> I had some problems that I wanted to get covered. And I just spent the last four and a half weeks finding out what the answers were to those questions. It took me that long. So I figured I'd just put some things on the list that you might be interested in, you know, in case you need them. Um, some of them are fairly straightforward and uh, not very earth shaking. I'm gonna cover as many as I can. Uh, we'll, we'll do about 20 minutes today or so. Um, and then um, I'm doing the last meeting of the year, uh, th four weeks from now. Uh, so I'll, whatever we don't finish today, I'll cover on the, that last meeting. Um, uh, and they're just things, uh, you know, how do I do this if I want to, if I have to do it, why do I want to do it and how do I do it? Um, so some of them are sort of basic, basic kinds of things like what right clicking is, uh, how to restart in safe mode. And a lot of people hear the word how to boot to safe mode, but nobody ever says what boot means. You know, boot to me was when you, what you wore when you had rain, you know, now, or when you went riding. Um, now we boot. I don't know what that means. I didn't. Um, how to check to see if I'm backing up every night. How to restore my printer settings when I get that inevitable list. You know, the inevitable error. Printer not found. 
what the heck do you mean the printer's not found? You've been printing to it for two years. And now it's not found, you know, it moved, it went out, what happened? <clears throat> how do I recover a file that I accidentally deleted? Uh, how do I recover a backup on a phone or an iPad? Anybody ever done that? <clears throat> recover, a, recover a backup? Yeah, it's just fun. How to recover deleted contacts. How do I de recover deleted contacts from my phone? You know, I delete some contacts. Now I all of a sudden, oh man, I shouldn't have deleted that. That's really important. You know, it's my boss. Yeah. How to find my iPhone, how to find my friends. And what is the mail outbox and what the heck do I do if something's in there for a long time? You know, we all knew what the outbox was in our offices, right? We had an inbox. Some of us had a secretary put stuff in there. Some of us had the mail clerk put stuff in there. Some of us used, used it for my to-do box, you know? And then there was the outbox. And I knew my outbox was empty. It meant my secretary came and took stuff out of it, right? I was lucky. But why do I have an outbox on email and what happens? So those, you know, just sort of my list of stream of consciousness. If you have other questions like this, you know, Send them to me and I'll add them to the list and we'll cover them. Let's do it. Let's do a few of them. What's right clicking? Anybody know? Why do I want to right click something? Yeah, sure. It gives you options, right? So on my iPad, I showed you how, how I do a right click uh, when I when I went to um, when I went to my um, files, wherever the heck they went. Sorry, moved. I showed you what happened when I when I go here. If I want to right click this, I hold my finger on it, and that right click gives me this list of options up here. I can copy, duplicate, rename, move, delete, share, tag it, or get the info. What's info? Info tells me all sorts of stuff about the file, right? It tells me what kind it is. It tells me where it is. Is this showing up on there? Oh, yeah, it is. It's here. It's just sort of um, blurry because the white and the white marry. But here's the file, right? It tells me what the name of this file is. It tells me that it's in iCloud Drive. So those of you who wonder where the heck is it when I'm looking at this, if it's in iCloud Drive or on, you know, here or there, it shows you. It shows you how big it is, where it is when it was created, and if I have a tag, right? So sometimes I want to do that on my device, on my, on my Mac, right, or on my iMac, or on my Windows machine. Right-clicking does that. So right-clicking or control-clicking tells you things about what you can do with that file, okay? And if I click the right place, this doesn't respond, right? I have to do it on my iPad. And then it goes away. Um, if I do the same thing on a file, on a folder, nothing happens, right? Same thing happens. Copy, duplicate, and the rename, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what right-clicking is. That's why right-clicking is important. It gives you a menu of options. And on your Mac, it does the same thing. Sometimes you want to send something someplace. On the Mac, what's very interesting is you'll get a share box. You'll get the share box. Right? So on a Mac, if I right click or control click, I get all these options, right? I can open it. I can open with, which means here's the list of other programs that will open that file. I can get the info, which is the little info thing on this on my uh, thing I was just showing you. I can rename it, I can compress it, I can duplicate it, I can make an alias. What's an alias for? Yeah, it's, a, it's another copy, but it's not a copy of it. It's a pointer that points to it, so I can move it someplace else, right? And I can refer back. I can share. So if I wanted to send this thing to somebody, I could send it by mail, or message it, or airdrop it, or send it, put it in my notes, or add it to my reminders, or I can share it with other people, right? 
and then I can do more if I wanted to do that. I can use stacks, which on a Mac lets you stick them together uh, in a, a single place to clean up your desktop. I can add tags, I can team view, and I can edit the programs. So that's what right clicking is for. Right clicking is that, right clicking or control clicking. Sometimes you wanna be able to do something, you don't know how to do it, right click it or control click it. Okay. Either way, from the oldest to the newest, and then the latest to the yeah, yeah, this guy, yeah, sorting sorting by lets you then yeah. not sort. I can snap to grid, which means put them in a thing, and then I can sort by name, when it was open, size, tags, kind. So if I wanted to put these all in order of what kind, you see they they're now all screenshots together, and all the documents are together, and the photos are together. Right. Yeah, I have a mouse and I'm right clicking. Well, on, on, on this device, I have to control click. But if I have a mouse mouse, I can right click. And click your and click your mouse. Yeah, you hold down the, um, I have a mouse, right? I'm holding down the control button. Trackpad is, trackpad is the same. I can use the trackpad to move the mouse and I can push control and touch my mouse, my trackpad the same way, or, or I can touch with two fingers and make, that's a right click in, on a trackpad. Right. Two fingers right click. And the way you find those, and the way you find those is in system preferences, um, trackpad, thank you. And then here are all the, the things that you can do on your trackpad, right? You can swipe between pages by moving to the left or right. That's for, for pointing and clicking, I can do these things. For scrolling, I can do these things. And more gestures I can do here. But notice when you check them, it, it shows it to the right. Yeah, so it sure. Shows each one as he selects them. So if I pick this guy, this guy is showing me what that is, right? Secondary click, click or tap with two fingers. That's a right click, it's a set secondary click. Right. So that's in system preferences trackpad. I still have a question. Go ahead. And if you're on your Mac, you that's why we're here, so it's good. On your Mac, go ahead. If you're joint photo say, and you want them in a certain uh, order, I've had them switch order on me, and I called Apple Air because I couldn't figure it out, and they couldn't. Say, say again what you want. The order of the photographs. In photos. Photos up in your photos. Okay, so I here's photos. I want to see the oldest ones first. I want to always see the, new, the latest photos first. Okay, so I go to view and uh, sort, and I say keep sorted. Yeah. Um, must be preferences, right? I forget. I just went through this. Does anybody know the answer to that? What is the question? The question is, how do you change the sort order in, a, in photos? In an album? Right. Image. Yeah, we did sort. It doesn't give you an option. It gives you just this. So where do you take that check off? All right. So when all else fails, we do that. Now will it let me do that? 
no. Show all, show edited, always show. Where is Marilyn when we need her? <laughs> Marilyn, Marilyn, where are you? Where are you? I have figured it out in the past, but it still happens every once in a while, maybe when you change the operating system or make a change, and then it'll come in and say, oh, this is not going to go through this path. I should write it down. Yeah, write it down and then send it to all of us, since obviously I don't know how to do it either. What if you were edit select all? I, well, I guess select it all, right? I just did, right? I did command A, which selects all, right? Now I have them all selected. I'm showing all items. How about sort, help sort. Keep sorted by oldest. Yeah, okay. How about sort? You mean if I prick, if I just touch sort, will that let me do it? No, can't be. Okay, that's my second question for the day. How do you sort pictures? Okay, so we got we got the right clicking and things in our heads. Right clicking, control clicking. It's pretty it's pretty handy. It lets you do a lot of different things. Um, let me skip these restore things for a minute. Um, how to check to see that my iPad or iPhone is backing up every night as I plan. I said hope because some of us don't plan. So how do I do that? Does everybody know? The answer is on the screen. Oh, you can't see the screen because I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, sure. You go to settings, my name, iCloud, back up now and see what the status is. So let's look at that just to make sure. All right, so settings, um, I, my name. Come on, try it again. Settings, my name, iCloud. And then the iCloud page takes me down here where it says iCloud backup, all right? iCloud backup, and the iCloud backup should be on, all right? That's step one. And then down here on the next page, it says iCloud backup on, and then backup now, but under it, it says last successful backup at 11.18 a.m. So while we were sitting here, just before we started, it backed up. Right? Probably because I made a change or did something. So how do you check to make sure you're backing up? You go to settings, iCloud, your name, iCloud, look on the last page and see that you're backing up and do that every once in a while. If it says you didn't back up since April, then you're not, something's not working, right? Either your Wi-Fi is not connecting or your, your green things aren't connected or you didn't have enough power because it doesn't, it won't back up if you have, don't have enough power. Does it have to be plugged in? It, it says you have to be plugged in. If you read this, it says you have to be plugged in. Connected to power, locked, and on Wi-Fi. Generally speaking, it, you don't have to be, but it should be, right? Okay, one more, and then we're going to... Um, um, Let's cover the one that I asked you about. How do you recover a backup on an iPhone? You know, you can't, backing up an iPhone or an iPad is not like Time Machine. Time Machine on our, on our Mac, you can go to Time Machine, open Time Machine and get a single file. You can go recover that file, right? And I covered that a few weeks ago, so it's in the, it's in the videos. If you, um, want to recover your backup on an iPhone or an iPad, you literally have to go in and erase your phone and download the backup again. I don't know who thought of that idea, but that's what they do. So how many of us have done that? 
We've done that every time we've bought a new phone, right? What's the first question they ask? Do you have this phone backed up? That's why the first subject I covered, the, the last subject I covered is so important. As long as you have a backup, then to recover your, your phone, you just erase your phone and download the backup or erase your iPad and download the backup. And we do it all the time when we buy a new phone, we don't give it a second thought. I mean, we do because we're sitting there for an hour. But other than that, it's, um, uh, it's uh, the way we recover a backup. Okay. So I'll publish those three or four things uh, on the list when I publish the notes and uh, we'll cover some more of these in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you have stuff like this, send them to me, you know, things that you don't have to do, but you might want to have somewhere in a little file. I have a file, by the way, that's called, how do I do that? <laughs> Literally. And it's just little snippets like this, each one on a separate page, a separate file, and it's titled, how do I do that? So that I can uh, find it when I use it. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.